Florida Gators have a game tomorrow in the Las Vegas Bowl against Oregon State, but the depth chart came out and it's kind of interesting. We're going to talk about it here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown Gators, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. We're available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Happy Friday. I'm Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Written work with Whole Nine Sports and Giants Country of SI.com. Today's episode of Lockdown Gators is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Check out Bet Online. That's where the game starts. The Florida Gators play tomorrow against Oregon State, and the depth chart came out, and there are a few noteworthy things here. Quarterback room is set as Jack Miller III, Kyle Engel, and Max Brown. It's interesting because Jack Anders, of course, is the other quarterback where he said, hey, I'm going to hit the portal, but I'm, I'm going to stick it out with Florida. I'm going to play with Florida until I hit that portal. And now he is not on the depth chart. I don't know if that's just him, you know, finishing practices with the Gators, just being near the Gators. But Max Brown's first appearance on the depth chart. Uh, Kyle Engel, of course, is there. He's going to be here next year as well. And Jack Miller III is the Ohio State transfer, who is the starting quarterback in this bowl game. It's about as big an audition bowl game. It's about as big an audition you can have in this bowl game for next year, potentially being the starting quarterback of the Florida Gators, he will go into the spring as the favorite to be the starting quarterback. No doubt about that. Yes, Jaden Rashad is going to be here, but Jack Miller III is going to be the leader early on. Get yourself used to that one, Gators fans, because you should be used to it. The only players that are on the depth chart that are hitting the transfer portal and are on the depth chart David Reese as the second Jack linebacker that's stand-up edge rusher, and Chase Whitfield, the second long snapper on the team, uh, who just got an offer recently from Florida A&M. So congrats to Chase. Javon Dexter is one of the few Gators who declared for the draft early on. He is the only one that has already publicly declared for the draft and has one last game as a Gator, of course, Richard Garage, Amari Bernie, and Trey Dean have not publicly said anything about the NFL, but the expectation is that this game tomorrow will be their last game as a Florida Gator. I believe Amari Bernie is out of eligibility. I believe Trey Dean, if he really wanted to, had one more year of eligibility remaining, but Trey Dean yesterday morning accepted an invite to the East-West Shrine game, which is another all-star game, college all-star game going into the NFL. Richard Garage, uh, either earlier this week or late last week, accepted an invite to the Senior Bowl. So Trey Dean will be headed to Vegas, or maybe he'll just stay there. Uh, Trey Dean will be in Vegas for the Shrine game. Richard Garage will be in Mobile, Alabama with me for the Senior Bowl. And Amari Bernie, I think, is going to be a Senior Bowl player. I think he should be a Senior Bowl player. I was incredibly, incredibly tough on Amari Bernie this past offseason and early in the year, but he has done nothing but made strides this year, which, by the way, gives me a bit of confidence in Florida Gators linebacker coach Jay Bateman, who I know a lot of Gators fans are pretty hard on. But I, I think that he's done a good job. You know, Ventrell Miller played the best game of his played, uh, played the best year of his career. Amari Bernie had the best year of his career. Shamar James, great way to get up to speed and start it. Derek Wingo making strides, and he is going to be a starting linebacker, by the way, this week. Uh, Derek Wingo starting at linebacker, at Mike Linebacker, in the place of Ventrell Miller. Amari Bernie will continue to play the will. Florida, of course, does not have a Sam linebacker, so or st- does not start a Sam linebacker. Derek Wingo getting the start is important because, like Jack Miller the third, Derek Wingo will go into the spring as the heir apparent to that Mike linebacker role, which is so important in this defense because as the Mike, you are the communicator. Scooby Williams got the start against South Florida early in the year. 
it went poorly. It did. Scooby Williams is backing up Derek Wingo. Derek Wingo got the start for the first half of the Florida State game. Didn't go didn't go great, but didn't go horrible either. Derek Wingo is the guy that I think should be the starting Mike linebacker next year. Unless they bring in someone that performs great, it's probably going to be Derek Wingo, Shamar James, which is an awesome duo to have. My biggest concern here is in the run game, which we'll talk about in a little bit because the rest of the show is going to be previewing uh, the game and how Florida's game plan should be set up to attack Oregon State. Justin Shorter, who did declare for the draft and is not playing in the bowl game because, again, I don't fault him. He got injured in the last bowl game. Caleb Douglas will be getting the start for him, which is awesome. I'm a big fan of Payday Douglas. Have been all year, been asking for him to play more. He played a couple of times. Eastern Washington, of course, had the touchdown, and he's had a touchdown. I think it was Texas A&M was the second touchdown. He's played well this season when he's been given the opportunity. He will be given the opportunity even more. He's listed as an or with Jaquavian Frazier's, by the way, just to clarify that. But Caleb Douglas is the guy that I want to see as starting outside receiver next year running backs two running backs listed there are more running backs available but there are two running backs listed for the florida gators on the depth chart that should be the expectation for who's going to play like yeah there are other running backs but do we really think that they're going to play it's going to be montrell johnson and trevor Etienne, hopefully getting you know 18 plus carries uh in this las vegas bowl but also at running back you don't have naquan Wright. he's in the portal you don't have Lorenzo Lingard. He's in the portal. You have Isaac Ricks. You have Cornelius Barnes. You have Carlson Joseph. And the guy that I think is most likely to play if a third running back plays is Eddie Battle. I, I think that he's the next man up, but this running back room is thin right now. Yeah, you have you know five or six running backs available, but do you want any of them playing aside from Montreal Johnson and Trevor Etienne? And also, as far as Montreal Johnson and Trevor Etienne go, This is your last game of the year. You've got plenty of recovery time after this one, so you don't have to worry about necessarily managing a workload. You just have to worry about if they're banged up or preventing them from getting banged up. But for the most part, this is a game where you can go, hey, this is it for this year. You've got a couple of months of recovery time after this before we get really physical again. So guess what? We're going to run you until the wheels fall off. Um, But... It's going to be interesting, but we're going to talk about how Florida can actually attack Oregon State's defense. But first, a quick word from Bet Online because today's episode of Lockdown Gators is brought to you by Bet Online. The Florida Gators are currently 10 and a half point underdogs against Oregon State this Saturday. That's right. The line keeps moving in favor of Oregon State. It started at 10, then it came down to 9.5, and, and then it went to 10, and then it went to 10.5. I'm taking the under, 52 and a half, 53. It's been fluctuating between those. Either way, I'm taking the under and I'm probably alting it to under, you know, 49 and a half. But BetOnline is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information. I've been using BetOnline for years now. Couldn't be happier with it. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn all about the trends and action. Check out BetOnline. It's where the game starts. Thanks again for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. We're available daily. And free wherever you listen to podcasts. And when we talk about this game and how Florida can attack Oregon State's defense, which is freaking phenomenal, by the way, main thing has to be run that rock. Oregon State allows four yards per carry, which in the country, middle of the pack. We'll, we'll say that, middle of the pack. Um, but... I, I don't see anything about their defense that really scares me. If we're just being honest, there, there's nothing about that Oregon State defense that makes you go, ooh, it's going to be a bit tough as far as the run game goes. So I think that you got to run the ball. Teams have had success running the ball to either far outside and just being physical up front, which obviously we know this offensive line. We know they're going to be physical, of course. Uh, no Osiris Torrance, by the way, for Florida. He is uh, he's declared for the draft. He is not playing in his place at right guard. Is going to be Cameron Waits, six foot eight, three hundred seventy three pounds. That dude's got to be a mover, right? He played a little bit at tackle against, uh, I believe, it was Eastern Washington was his most snaps that he's played. But I think either way, you got to go. Okay, we're just gonna run this ball. You know, first down, second down, third down. If it's if it's third and four or less. 
expect runs because that's got to be the thing. Even when you had a fully healthy, full roster, you wanted to run the ball if you're Florida. You've got, I believe it's 55 guys available for this game. You're going to want to run the ball. Like You have to do it. You have to play clock management. You have to run the ball. You have to try to get out of there. And I realized that even yesterday on Crossover Thursday with Spencer McLaughlin from Locked On Pac-12 and Locked On Ducks, and with Locked On SEC, I was talking to Chris Gordy, uh, that the episode should be out today, where we were talking about this game. And I realized that I, I've sounded very grim about it, but I want to make this clear. Even the more I look at this game, I see a path to victory. I think there's like a 20% chance Florida wins this game, but I see a path to victory here where I look at it and I go, if Florida can run the ball consistently and pick up first downs and just move the ball, I'll take a field goal, field goal, field goal, field goal, field goal game. I'll I'll take it because I don't think Oregon State's offense is is very good either, but specifically run the ball outside the tight ends. That's where Oregon State has really struggled. Yeah, behind the tackles, They've given up some big runs. Outside the tight ends, they've given up a lot of yardage. They've given up explosive runs if you have a tight end on the end of the line blocking. They've given that up multiple times. I would expect them to do that again this week. Expect to see Jonathan Odom leading the way. Expect to see Dante Zanders out there. Keon Zipperer is out, so no Keon Zipperer. Hopefully we see Arliss Boardingham at some point. But this is a game where you've got to run the ball because this is not a game you should win. This is not a game that realistically you're going to win. There's a reason you are a double digit underdog in this game. I guess triple if you include the decimal, but but so there's a reason you're a double digit underdog run the ball. As far as throwing the ball, keep it short over the middle. This has nothing to do with Anthony Richardson, not being there. I guess it kind of does, but it's it fine. It it has to do with Anthony Richardson not being there. It doesn't have to do with Jack Miller being the quarterback. I'm not saying, hey, I don't trust Jack Miller to throw the ball. No. I'm saying the biggest area of weakness in that pass coverage has been that short underneath zone. That area. I say zone, but I, I just mean area because it could be man or zone. Either way, that's been the weakness. The attacking the linebackers has been the weakness. Every game where Oregon State has been attacked, we'll say, throwing the ball, has been by teams where they keep it short and over the middle. Get some yards after carry, after the catch, whatever it is. Get the ball to Ricky Pearsall. Get the ball to Montreal Johnson. Get the ball to Trevor Etienne. Get the ball to any of the tight ends that are going to be available, whether it's Jonathan Odom, Dazzy Sanders, Arliss Boardingham, Noah Keeter is on the depth chart this time. Get it over the middle of the field and underneath, and let's pick up yards after the catch. This is the thing where Spencer McLaughlin was on the show yesterday for a crossover, and he was saying, this is an Oregon State defense where their front seven is their weakness. Their secondary is fantastic, and he is not lying about that. Whether it's corners or safety, their front, their back four, fan, or back five if you're in nickel, fantastic. So their secondary, great. Their front you know, again, front six, front seven, whatever it is, not great. Attack them. You have to attack them, and you have to stress them out. Make them cover your rest. Put Ricky Pierce all over there and be like, okay, linebackers, get them. Good luck. And just you have to keep it short over the middle, specifically the Utah game. Utah demolished Oregon State short and over the middle of the field. That was their attack point. I get it. Utah has fantastic tight ends. That means they're going to target that area of the field a lot. That doesn't matter. It doesn't. You have great playmakers on Florida, too. You've got, again, I mentioned three specifically with Ricky Pearsall, Montreal Johnson, and Trevor Etienne. Get them the ball over the middle of the field. Little over route, little drag, whatever it is. Get them the ball over the middle of the field. Let them make plays after the catch, because guess what? That's what those three guys do. So let them do what they do. We're about to take a look at the defensive side of the ball, how Florida's defense can handle Oregon State's offense. But first, today's episode of Lockdown Gators is brought to you by the NHTSA. And I've said it before, like I'm an open book here. This one does touch home with me. Sincerely, I lost a teammate April 2021 to a drunk driver. Um, he was very young and, and it's heartbreaking. But when you're hanging out with some friends and you're putting back a few drinks and a few becomes a few too many, 
as the evening comes to a close and people are starting to head out, you think of calling for a ride, Uber, Lyft, whatever it is, and you're like, nah, I live nearby. I'm a good drunk driver. I can make it home okay. It's no big deal. Stop that immediately. Everyone knows the risk of drunk driving, but everyone's just like, ah, it's not going to happen to me. The results are tragic, often deadly, and I'll let you know, if you're one of my friends, if you have a beer and you try to leave, or if you have any alcohol and you try to leave within the next hour, I will fight you because I need to make sure that you're good to go. Uh, you ain't driving drunk. Doesn't stop people from getting behind the wheel. That People do that. That's why police officers are out right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives, not just, you know, you might hit someone. They're trying to save your life to drive sober or get pulled over. To wrap up today's show, we we're talking about the Florida Gators defense versus Oregon State offense and what the plan is. And here's the thing. We know what Oregon State's plan is. They're going to run the ball a ton. Because one, that that's just what they're good at. And two, that's kind of all they can do. When they throw the ball, their passing attack is not great, Bob. Uh, so, so when I'm looking at how to attack this, and again, I know that you're going to see a bunch of different looks from Patrick Tony and Sean Spencer. And I, I, I will be honest with you. I don't have much to explain how to stop this offense because I don't think you need much to do it. I think you come out in your usual nickel. You've got your three down linemen, your one stand-up edge rusher, your two off-ball linebackers. You've got the star, which, by the way, Trevez Johnson out this game. So it is Jadarius Perkins as the main star. Uh, I believe it's Jordan Young as his backup at star. Miguel Mitchell is the backup at safety with Donovan McMillan in the transfer portal now. Uh, he is the one immediately backing up Trey Dean. So I don't, I don't care who it is. I want to see Kamari Wilson play a lot, by the way especially against the team that's going to run the ball. And I don't mean take Trey Dean off the field. I mean, I want to see Kamari Wilson and Trey Dean because I think they're the two best tackling safeties out there uh, on this team. But you play cover zero. You play cover one. Why do you do that? Because you're looking at a team that's going to come out in heavy sets and they're going to want to run the football. So what do you do? Corners, press man. Corners, you, you line up on the outside and you get on the line of scrimmage and you get really physical with them on the line of scrimmage. You do that because receivers, they're not good. The Oregon State receivers aren't very good. They can't consistently create separation. The QB situation is rough. So what does that mean? That means we want to create tight windows. We don't want to sit back and zone. No, we want to play man coverage, and we want to be in your pocket while you're trying to run that route because I don't trust your quarterback to throw that ball. I, I don't trust him to throw it accurately enough for you to make a play on the ball. I don't. I, I don't think he's good enough to do that. So I'm, I'm going hip to hip. I'm trying to play man coverage here, and we're going to see how it goes. I know that I've been very critical of Jaden Hill in man coverage, and I will continue to be, by the way. He's bad in man coverage. But have him play man coverage. Have him do that. And, and if they want to test him, let them test him, because Jaden Hill does make great plays on the ball when it's in the air. So if you want to test Jaden Hill with the ball in the air, do that, because he'll pick you off. Simple as that. So physical at the line of scrimmage. We're going to press you immediately, whether it's one, I don't care which hand you use, if both hands, whatever you're going to do. You jam at the line of scrimmage. You stay in their hip pocket. In the front six, I want five guys rushing every single play. Five guys burgers sound pretty good too. But I want five guys rushing every single play. I want it to be your front four, and I want it to be one of the off-ball linebackers. That's what I want. I want you to throw bodies at the offensive line and i want you to have someone shooting gaps that's what you have to do to stop this game because they're going to run the ball a lot like i said like like they want to run the ball so how do you stop that you put big physical dudes on the line of scrimmage and you get physical with them you let them know hey i know we've been thought of as soft this whole whole season 1-0 and against the Pac-12 this year. 1-0 and against the Pac-12. So we've been thought of as soft. Utah thought they'd come out and just run the ball all day on us with ease. Didn't happen with them. And guess what? Their offensive line is better than yours. Their running back is better than yours. Their quarterback is better than yours. Their receivers are better than yours. Florida's defense should have a very good game. 
I think that I, I think Florida's defense should have a good game. I think that Florida's offense is going to be the more concerning part. But coverage wise, play cover zero, play cover one, two man if you want. Um, two man is is uh, what you would call in Madden. I think it's just cover two man or cover two under whatever it is. Where it's just you got your three DBs and two linebackers playing man coverage, two safeties over the top, four rushers. If you want to do that, do that. But I think cover zero, cover one allows you more versatility to blitz or send an extra rusher without leaving you in complete liability land as far as coverage wise. Cover zero does give you no safety help over the top. But again, we don't trust Oregon State to be able to throw the ball. So force them into these third and longs, play man, get off the field. I I think the game plan is that. Whether or not they'll execute it consistently, we'll see whether or not that's what Patrick Tony and Sean Spencer want to do consistently. We'll see. But for me, I think the game plan, play cover zero, play cover one, get physical at the line of scrimmage, be in their hip pocket because their quarterbacks, whoever it is, is not going to be able to make tight window throws. Their quarterback room is relatively weak. So we'll see. Whoever's throwing the football for them this week, not going to have a good time. Shouldn't have a good time. Get pressure in the backfield contain that running back that running game sorry contain the running game win the game if you can it's gonna be a low scoring game i think so have some fun with it go nuts be aggressive thanks for making locked on gators your first listen of the day every day we're available daily and free reviews in the podcast we will be going live tomorrow after the game win lose can't draw but win lose or draw <laughs> we'll be going live on locked on gators youtube channel for your second listen Check out Locked On SEC, hosted by Chris Gordy of Sports 790. I'm on that show today, so get the best coverage on the best conference, including the best university, the University of Florida. For Locked On Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work with Whole Nine Sports and Giants Country of SI.com, and I'll see you all tomorrow.